Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are in chapter 5 and we have saw some of the questions from this in our previous tutorial and we'll be looking forward to continue with remaining questions of this chapter as a part of this tutorial. The next question to talk about is question number 33 that is which of the following lists contain only typical exit criteria now a quick reminder team you should be able to answer this very straightforward if you understand the definition of entry and exit criteria when it comes to the entry criteria it always defines when you can start something start a process start a phase and it helps you to initiate an activity whereas the exit criteria on the other hand will determine that have you completed what you were supposed to complete so that you can stop the process. So any such attribute, any such criterion which justifies that you are uh, looking forward to this as a prerequisite will be a part of entry criteria or which justifies that we were we are done with what we were supposed to do will be a part of exit criteria. Given this information and understanding, let's start looking at the options what we have. Option A says reliability measures, test coverage, schedule, and status about fixing, defect, and remaining risk. So all these words look quite uh, understandable in terms of saying that could be a part of the exit criteria because fixing a defect is only a worry when we have a kind of, you know, a determination that how many defects can be uh, remained open or how many bugs should be closed before you can talk about closing your testing activity. Remaining risk that you could not mitigate would be certainly a part of exit criteria. But let's look at the other options which may be uh, relevant for us. B, reliability measures, test coverage, degree of testers independence. I think when you talk about the degree of testers independence, this is more of like an entry criteria. Before starting a process, you would measure how independent your testing team will be and how much coordination you need to have to set up between them, what kind of communication, what kind of documentation will all be dependent on that. So degree of independence should be considered as an entry, not exit criteria. C, reliability measures, the test coverage, test cost, availability of the test environment, which certainly makes it as entry criteria because availability of the test environment will define when to start executions on the testing. So this is not a part of exit criteria. And D, time to market, remaining defects, tester qualification. Tester qualification, first of all, is not an attribute to be measured for either entry and exit criteria. Yes, of course, to define a team, you may consider these items to set up the team composition, but not uh, as a part of specific criterion for entry or exit. So again, the second one under that is availability of testable use cases, which is again an entry criteria. Now, this certainly justifies us that uh, the right answer here is A, reliability measures, test coverage, schedule, and status about fixing defect and remaining risk will be a part of exit criteria. So that's how we should be able to understand and judge it. So each option, each option, each um, you know, matter a content in that option is crucial for every individual. So you should be referring to them word by word in such typical questions to be appropriately correct. Let's look at the next question here, which is question number 34, which of one of the following is not included in a test summary report. Now, the very first and important thing to be observed here that most of us ignore the word not and come to the subject that is test summary report. And that's where people come back and tell me that more options were correct and I was confused. Now, it's just because you did not read the word not in the question. So make sure that you read every single word when it comes to a K1 level questions, which are very straightforward. So which one of the following is not included in the test summary report? So here, one option will be something which is not included, and the three will be from the test summary report. So let's quickly look at the options. A says defining pass and fail criteria and objectives of testing, which is certainly something included in the test execution report but not in the summary because summary is more of like overall activity which you have performed summarizing it that we conducted so and so and uh, this is what the output was total percentage of pass total percentage of fail number of resolutions done and all sort of thing but not the criteria right on what grounds will you define a test as pass or fail so understanding deep dive of a particular option is equally important. Otherwise, it can be misguiding saying that 
Yes, we include parts percentage as a part of the test summary report, but this is not pass percentage. He's talking about the criteria to define whether a test is pass or fail. And the criteria generally is expected is equal to actual to mark it as pass. So B is deviation from the test approach. Of course, that's one of the entity. C measures of actual progress against exit criteria. Yes, exactly. We include that. And D evaluation of quality of the test object, which is, of course, the end goal of testing and must be included as a part of test summary report. So the only thing which is not included in the test summary report and the right answer is A defining pass or fail criteria and objectives of testing. Moving to the next question, that is question number 35. The project develops a smart heating thermostat. The control algorithms of the thermostat were modeled as a MATLAB Simulink models and run on the internet connected server. This thermostat uses the specification of the server to trigger the heating valves. Now the test manager has defined the following test strategies or approaches in the test plan. The acceptance test for the whole system is executed as an experience-based test. The control algorithm on the server are checked against a standard of the energy saving regulations. The functions, functional test of the thermostat is performed as risk-based testing. The security test data or communication via the internet are executed together with external security experts. Now, what four common types of test strategies or approaches did the test manager implement in the test plan? Now here, I think which is uh, completely dependent on the understanding you have done from the seven different approaches which we have, including the analytical, methodical, process compliant, consultative, directive, and uh, you know, a lot more regression averse, all those sort of thing. So if you have even one liner of understanding on that, that will help you to understand that what exactly it is. Now here, you don't have to go by the sequence. Sometimes the options can be in the different order. For example, the first one, which is saying acceptance criteria is not a methodical or not a model based or not a, you know, analytical. Analytical is all about risk. So whenever we talk about the risk, it has to be considered into account. But do not expect the options in the right order how the things are given to you. One or the other way that should have been covered in the given option and that would suffice your purpose. So being just straightforward because certainly you need to understand all seven approaches first and then pick up the straightforward answer. And for that, I'll leave you with the tutorial which we have got in our playlist. The right answer here is B, analytical, analytical standard compliant, consultative and reactive. That's the right answer for this. And for justifications and details, please look into the video tutorial of this uh, from my ISTQB Foundation playlist, which will help you to understand the answer. So putting it all together, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.